Welcome back to my channel. It's Salisa coming to you from Beautifully Me and You. And today I'm doing a collaboration video for Crock-Pot Meal and Dessert with another WW YouTube content creator. Her name is Melissa Rocha. I'm gonna put all of her information here on the screen and then I'll see you in a minute. Come on, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. We'll Shree Hall for you. And today I'm going to be sharing with you my September favorites. Please check out Melissa's channel when you get done watching mine and see what creation she was able to come up with for Weight Watchers dinners and desserts in a crock pot as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to cooking. I'm gonna start first with the dinner and then we'll address dessert. Let's get right into it. So these are all the items that we're gonna need for the meatballs. I'm using a fourth a cup of half and half, a tablespoon of butter, one egg. This is about a fourth to a half a cup of chopped onions. It calls for a fourth a cup, but I just didn't even measure it. Some parsley, a fourth of a teaspoon of allspice, a half a teaspoon of thyme, and then one whole teaspoon of salt. It also calls for two teaspoons of pepper. And then you need two slices of bread as well as the 99% fat-free chicken breast. So, oh, and then the other thing we're gonna need later is gonna be some sour cream and better than bouillon. So these are all the things that we're gonna need for the recipe. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the meatballs first. There is um, a little bit of prep that we have to do on the stove before putting them into the crock pot, but it's gonna be Swedish meatballs. And traditionally you would see it served with egg noodles, but we've had noodles a couple of times this week. Actually, we cook some of the pasta ready noodles. So I'm going to serve it with the gravy over rice, and I love rice, so can't go wrong with that. And then some vegetables on the side. To get started, you put two slices of bread inside of a bowl, and then you wanna saturate it or soak it with the fourth a cup of half and half. And while that's soaking and getting nice and soft for the meatballs, you're gonna head over to a stove and put one tablespoon of butter and then add your fourth of a cup to half a cup of onions. Now these are just the onions for the inside of the meatball. You'll be adding additional onions later for the gravy, but for right now, you're just gonna brown the onions that you have going inside of the meatballs. I'm also adding a touch of garlic just for more flavor because sometimes that 99% um, fat-free uh, turkey meat can be a little bit dry or lacking in flavor. So we're just trying to jazz it up with all the other things that we're adding in it. Once the onions are pretty much translucent, then I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic paste. Like I said, just to give it a little bit more flavor and cook that for a short time. You don't want the garlic to burn, so you're just gonna stir it for a short period and then we'll be adding this mixture to the turkey meat. Once that mixture is cooked and ready to go, then I'm just gonna go ahead and add my 99% lean, 1% fat turkey meat into a bowl. And then I'm gonna come with the onion and garlic mixture and add that in. Next goes in the bread that's been soaking in the half and half. It's nice and soft now. Then we're gonna crack one egg as well as start putting our seasoning, which we're putting our allspice, pepper, salt, and thyme. And then we get in there with our hands and just mix it until it's blended. Now you don't wanna over mix it, especially with this lean turkey meat. It can make the meatballs really dry. I'm adding a little bit of parsley just for the color and then I'm gonna continue to mix just until it's well combined. Don't over mix it. Now next I begin to form the meatballs. And so I'm just taking a portion and I want them to be even in size, but whatever size you like, it doesn't really matter. I portion off an even size amount of meat mixture and then roll it in my hands. Now this mixture is very sticky and kind of tacky. And so for that reason, it will get kind of all over your hands. Just be prepared to wash when you're done. I then once I get them all measured out pretty much in the same size, 
Um, then I start to put a fourth a cup of flour into a bowl and roll them all in that fourth a cup of flour to coat them on the outside because with these particular meatballs, they are so soft that they would probably break apart if we didn't fry them first. So I'm putting another tablespoon of butter into that same skillet that I cooked the onions and the garlic and stirring that around, okay? And then I'm gonna put the meatballs in there and allow them to cook for about two minutes on each side. One of the reasons why I said it really doesn't matter what size they are, I mean, you definitely can get a larger skillet. I like a kind of bigger meatball, but no matter what, you're gonna divide the meatball sizes into five portions is what I did. So I had 15 meatballs, everybody got a three meatball serving and there was one serving left over. So here I am just cooking them and browning them. They don't need to cook all the way through. We're just trying to get a nice brown crust on both sides before we put them into the crock pot so they can hold up well. Now that we have all the meatballs pretty much seared over in the skillet, we're gonna start to build the gravy. And so in the crock pot, I'm putting the other half of the yellow onion that I had. And this one's kind of coarsely chopped. It doesn't matter what size you like. Then I'm putting in a fourth a teaspoon of nutmeg, as well as some more thyme, a fourth a teaspoon of thyme. And then I'm gonna add some of this better than bouillon. And I'm only adding one tablespoon of that because that can get rather salty, but I'm adding some better than bouillon and that's the chicken flavor. And then also I'm gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce to the bottom of the pan and I added a tiny bit of Dijon mustard that's not on the screen, but it's actually in there. Okay, then I line the bottom of the pan with those ingredients and on top of that, I place all the meatballs. Now that all the meatballs are in, I'm gonna add a half a cup of this Daisy Light Sour Cream, and then I add one fourth cup of half and half, and then one cup of water, and that's it. Then I cover it and allow it to cook on high for two hours. Now, unfortunately, I lost the footage of me opening the crock pot at the end of all this, okay? I think I was just too ready to eat, you guys. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I recorded it, but I did end up recording my plate so you can see what it looks like there. It had plenty of gravy and it really came out good. Two hours later. So here's what they came out looking like. I served it with some white rice and a side of asparagus. Dinner served. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna try the Swedish meatballs. I've made them before out of turkey, fat-free turkey or 99% lean turkey, um, but I used a recipe and I'm gonna put that in the description box down below that recipe that you actually cook them on the stove. But this one for the crock pot, you saw how I made them. Let's taste them. They look like this. Mm-hmm. They're really good. But I would leave out the Dijon mustard next time. I don't know. I would probably stick more in line with the regular traditional Swedish meatball recipes that I have. And one of the best ones with turkey meat is down in the description below. So check that out and try them out. For dessert, I'm gonna be making some devil's food cake with chocolate pudding on top in the crock pot and we're gonna see how this turns out. This is my first time doing this and I decided to use these Reynolds Kitchen Foil Baking Cups and that's what you'll see here in the trays. Um, also, I'm only gonna be using half of the package and so on the back you see that the recipe calls for a cup and a half of water, a half cup of oil and three eggs. Instead of using that, I'm just gonna use two thirds cup water and a fourth of a cup of oil, as well as one egg. And that's gonna be all of the things that I'm gonna put in this bowl to prepare the actual cake mix first. And then I'm gonna make a half a package of this sugar-free, fat-free chocolate pudding. And that calls for two cups of milk, but I'm only gonna use one cup of 2% milk. So what I'm gonna do when I get it all assembled, I'll show you that in just a minute. But this is basically 
all the ingredients that you're gonna need. For these cakes, I'm kind of just winging it. So I'm putting half of a pack of the cake mix into the bowl. And I'm not measuring half, I'm kind of just pouring until it looks like it's about half of the package to me. And then I'm using half of the regular ingredients that it calls for the cake mix. So I'm putting in a fourth a cup of the oil instead of a half a cup, two thirds cup water instead of a cup and a fourth, and one egg instead of three eggs. And I'm gonna mix all that up with my mixer. And then we'll move on to making the pudding. Now for the pudding, it's about the same thing. I'm gonna just eyeball about half of the package of the sugar-free pudding. And then instead of adding two cups of cold milk, I'm only gonna add one cup of cold milk and whip it for two minutes until it actually turns into chocolate pudding. To make each molten cake, I'm adding one fourth of the cake batter, and then you'll see me add four chocolate chips on top, and then I'm gonna add two tablespoons of the chocolate pudding on top of that. Now, the molten cakes are supposed to basically sink down in the middle from the pudding, and when you break it apart, you'll be able to see that part kinda come on out, ooze out like a molten cake. The chocolate chips I decided to add at the last minute just to bring a little more sweetness because it just wasn't seeming like these things were actually sweet enough for me, but you know, that just might be my taste palette. I really liked these aluminum foil tins um, because it made the cleanup for the crock pot just that much easier. All I had to do was just place these aluminum foil tins inside the crock pot. The only thing I did before I put them in was add about a fourth a cup of water to the bottom so it can generate some steam for the cupcakes. So here I'm just adding a little bit of water and then adding all the cupcakes and I put a lid on it and allow the crock pot to do all the work. Now, once I got all the um, lava cakes into the crock pot, I cooked them on high for two hours, just like I did for the meal. And this is what they came out looking like. Don't take it personal, I ain't lying. I been two hours later. Okay, so this is what they look like when the two hours had passed. And they did have that soft center from the pudding. And there was a part of me that kept saying like, are they done? You know, the cake was very firm and it looked like regular cake, surprisingly. I never cooked a cake in a crock pot before. I told you this is my first time trying this. Um, but all recipes have hits and miss. So for this particular recipe, if I was going to create it again, I would just use the cake mix. I don't think that I would put the pudding or the chocolate chips in it. It's just not necessary. The cake was good enough and I'd serve it with some sugar-free ice cream. The cupcake ended up coming out in the points calculator to be five points. So a half of one of these cupcakes is what I ended up having for dessert later after tasting my son's. And my kids actually really enjoyed them. So maybe it was just me wishing I was having some really chocolatey treat. And this to me just wasn't it. But hey, you never know unless you try it, right? Well, that's everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I love to talk to you guys down in your comments. If you have any crock pot meals that you love and enjoy, please list them down in the comment section so I can try them as well. I appreciate you guys for watching. Take care. Hey, hey, you always posting the pictures, trying to look like you winning, or look like you always be working.